Welcome, everybody. Mike Martinez, and we got another series uh, in the Masters Mindset Training. I got one of the top producers in the company, somebody that I truly admire, somebody that, that uh, I got time to spend some time with uh, as, as part of a group. We were part of a group called the 100K Team, and I got to hear and listen to the way he thinks sometimes. And it's very impressive. And the guy, I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, run circles around me and run circles around most people that, that, that I know. And what I find truly incredible about this gentleman is the fact that for me, for me, he's the Roger Bannister of Metro. Now, for those of you that don't know who Roger Bannister is, Roger Bannister is the first person that broke the four minute mile. Prior to Roger Bannister doing that, I believe it was in 1953, uh, prior to that, for, for since the beginning of time, everybody thought that you couldn't run a mile in less than four minutes. And he scientifically broke it down and he did it. And once he did that, everybody started doing it. I mean, and now you got high school kids that run a, 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 a four minute minus mile, right? Uh, a mile in less than four minutes. And that's what Mr. John Mesco, uh, EVP with Metro, uh, is doing, I believe, with the company. Just picking up the bar for us and, and showing us, hey, you could take it to this level. You could take it beyond that level. You could take it to this level. So anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much. Uh, and, and by the way, um, let me just say this before I actually get John up here. Uh, John has been incredibly gracious to me. Uh, whenever I've gone and said, hey, John, can you help me figure this out? Can you help me uh, share some information with me? He's always been there, and I truly, truly appreciate that because, John, even though we're both sponsored by the same person, we're not in the same team. So John doesn't benefit from anything I do. I don't benefit from anything John does, um, but he's always been gracious enough to, to help me out. So, John... I want to welcome you. Um, thank you for taking your time. I know you're incredibly busy, and uh, thank you for sharing uh, your time with me today, man. Sure. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, well, John, just so that, uh, you know, I, I find your story fascinating um, because I've heard it so many times, And uh, but for those uh, of, 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 of the audience that haven't heard your story, who or where was John? Give us a glimpse as to where you were prior to joining Metro. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, I was a, a high-end swimming pool builder for about 30 years. And uh, back in 2011, I estimated a lot of work, a couple million dollars. And uh, after 11 months, I hadn't signed any work. So my wife said, get a job. I'm retiring. So I had to find, a, <laughs> find something to do. And I found this or this found me and uh, I started, I, I didn't start fast. I didn't get licensed for three months, you know? And, uh, but once I got licensed, I took off and uh, you know, I thought it was a slow takeoff. Everybody else thought it was pretty quick. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's so. interesting. Did, uh, with that background, did you, um, uh, did you find it difficult to transition into the Metro business to start getting success? And, and what skills did you have to develop in order to do that? Well, I think a lot of the skill sets I had just through life helped me a lot. And I, I tell everyone that comes into the business that they all have skill sets that they can apply to this business. And then you, the ones that you don't have are the ones that maybe a little lower on your scale, you just have to hone a little bit and, and uh, get better at it, you know, but I, uh, you know, I, I wrote, I wrote um, contracts on large jobs. I dealt with uh, residential properties, but some of them were million dollar properties. I understood building. I built a couple of houses, you know, I was a site contractor. So all of that comes into play, especially now that I'm, uh, I'm adjusting claims the past three years or so. My first six, seven years, I was just doing what everybody else does, write, write claims and recruit people to build a team. So I think my skill set and my life experiences helped me out, out a lot. It's funny, I was in a similar business, the same business that Steve McCaffrey was in, the president of the company, 25 years ago. And that was with Art Williams, A.L. Williams. What a tremendous guy. But... 
he he modeled this company metro after al williams as far as the structure of the company being able to build a business within a business override people um you know that that type of a business and uh steve modeled this business after that and uh it's brilliant it really is brilliant so uh i'm here 10 years after, later after i started and doing very well so you were able to take some of the skills that you developed in A.L. Williams and, and just kind of uh, transfer it to Metro? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Well, as far as the recruiting end, I mean, look, I'm a, I tell people I'm a headhunter. I, I, hunt, I hunt for the right kind of people that want to do this. And I can tell you, out of all the people I recruit, probably 30 or 40 percent definitely have the capability of earning well into six-figure income, but they just don't. So it's really a decision between it's right here the decision on you know moving forward and but out of all the people that i recruit i look for people that are you know that that are like myself that want are entrepreneurial that want to really do something that want to change something that that want to really are sick and tired of being sick and tired want to change their life and and um that's what this is about it's really about a life change and um uh, I believe it's the best opportunity in America, bar none. And I'll yeah. tell you why. I'll explain to you why as we go on. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I know you do a lot of recruiting and you're one of the top recruiters in the company. And a lot of the recruiting comes through um, uh, 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 Zip Recruiter and stuff right. that you're doing online and stuff sure. like that. But when you're working on a one on one basis and you're approaching somebody, are you looking? for a specific quality in a person or are you just saying let me put the opportunity out there blanketed to everybody and see which one comes up with uh the 20 percent that i'm looking for yeah and i do that i i throw it all against the wall and i try to find people that i think the one number one characteristic in someone they have to be hungry they have to be willing i don't really care how old they are what sex they are what side of the tracks they came from, whether they have uh, sheepskin, the paperwork to, to back up uh, their education. None of that matters. None of it matters. I think the most important skill that someone could have is the will, the willpower. Mm -hmm. So I say it's not the skill, it's the will. We can teach anybody to do this. OK, and um, that's what makes it for a good opportunity. Anybody can do this business and learn it. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, just a few seconds ago, maybe 30 seconds ago, you said it's it's all in the mind. That a, a big portion of the people that you recruit, you see the potential of them b making a six figure income there. Is there anything you do specifically to trigger that mindset or to try to get them to think about themselves being a successful public adjuster? Yeah, sure. You see, most people, in my opinion, uh, that that don't do this business or don't pro progress or proceed with the business, I think they just have doubts. They have questions in their mind because why wouldn't anybody, you know, get involved with a comp a business where it doesn't cost you any money? And God, mm. you say zero, where there's this opportunity for six figure income. Why wouldn't anybody do that? Why wouldn't they want to change their life? And I think the number one reason why people don't proceed or don't change their life is because they don't have any faith in themselves that they can do it. So I try to instill that into anybody and everybody that anybody can do it if you're willing. All I need is a willing soul. If I have a willing soul and they show me somebody that's hungry, then I'm going to run with them and I'll run as fast as they want to run. When they don't want to run anymore, then I find somebody else to run with. That's the way I work. So, but I can teach somebody. I believe I can teach somebody to do what I do in a third of the time that it took me to do it. So uh, I, know, I know that I, uh, I didn't have, Mike, we didn't have this much that what we have today, 10 years ago. I could tell you that we didn't have it. Absolutely. You know, uh, Art Latanti was, well, you know, he's the guy that hired you, I know, and I'm, I'm direct to him now. And he, uh, he, you know, it was revolutionary that he was running a 100K team, you know, and he was training people and teaching people, you know, that was revolutionary, you know, 
And so we just took it to another level. You know, I, I, that's the way I see it. And I learned a lot from him. And, uh, you know, you could do it in 10 years or you could do it in two years or a year. Yeah. I need mean, to get to the top of, of this game. Get to the top of this game. You're going to well, be well into six-figure income. Yeah. You know, I remember uh, hearing Steve McCaffrey talk about you one day. Um, and, and he was saying, you know, the, the, the quality that John has is the fact that he knows how to paint the picture and get the person in that picture. So where they're, they're, you know, they're part of that. And he's like, you know, Hey, I'll show you how to do this. And you, before you know it, you'll be doing this and you'll be doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. And, and I, I believe, and, and you've heard some of my trainings in the past, I believe it has a lot to do 80% mental, right? Yes. You got to get the person to, if they subconsciously buy into that, the, it, the game over, right? Well, you know, I feel like I, I'm, I'm a person that I don't look at problems. I look at solutions. So when I'm working with someone, I, I need to, I, I need to know, I need to ask the right questions. I mean, I just talked to a young lady this afternoon and I thought she was a very young lady, but she, she, she's got a 21 year old daughter. I thought she was 21. She sounded like she was 21. <laughs> oh, wow. so, you know, I have to ask her questions like, um, you know, are you married? How many kids you have? Do you own a home? I want to know about your life. What, what are you doing now? Are you gainfully employed? Well, I'm looking, okay, and I'm going to do this part time. What are you looking for? What do you what do you expect? What are your expectations? I want to know what your your desires are. What are you dreaming about? What, what who do you want to do? You want to go work for someone to exchange your time for money? Uh, uh, that's not the best way to do it. Now I understand you got to do it sometimes. Look, I got turned down uh, a year twenty years ago when I was in between jobs. That I got turned down for ten dollar an hour jobs. You know, mm. and I know I was much more qualified than anybody else, but I was turned down. How's that hit on your ego? So, but I had to make some money someplace. I had to make, I had just was squeezing out, trying to make squeeze out a uh, living, trying to pay my bills. So, you know, um, I try to find out where people are, take them from where they're at, and then just catapult them into the stratosphere. <laughs> into another level. Now, yeah, with level. that said, yeah, with that said, John, um, when we're talking about training people, do you, do you choose to individualize your training or does everybody get the same training? And then it's all pretty much duplicatable, the same stuff, you know, as far as training is concerned, I ask a lot of the same questions, you know, but you have to understand where people are at to take them further. I'm not going to do the same thing. I just hired another guy yesterday. He's already got his public adjuster license in Georgia. Okay, I got to call him this afternoon. I'm not going to take him uh, to the to the same places that that uh, you know this this uh, young lady that I'm I'm talking to. You know, he's already there. Uh, he he has a lot of the skills. So now I got to just teach him the metro uh, way. Okay, and, and uh, so I'm going to bring up you know so. It's all about the same. I bring people from A to B to C to D, E, F, G, but I may not start with A with someone. I may start with C or D, depending where they're at, obviously. They don't need to be taught from A necessarily. I can tell you this, though. I demand and I, I, I tell everyone, they own a home. I need to do a PCR with you. Get your spouse out. I'm doing a presentation for you. That PCR that we do, property coverage review, is a must. And I do the same thing every time, okay? And I'll do three more with them. So there is a track that I stick to, yes. But some people I may talk a little bit differently to depending on what their level of achievement is, their level of expertise and what, what their background is. Where they're, where they're stationed at the time. Right, take them from where they're at and move them forward, yeah. Okay. So that took a while for me to learn early on because. You know, I'm, I was still learning when I even came in this business. I was I managed people. I managed crews of 45 guys and so on. But I still had a lot to learn as far as this business is concerned and applying uh, the the skills that we needed in this business to put, help push people along. So it's a learning process. You're not going to learn overnight. So, yeah. you know, that's it. 
And, and I'll tell you what, guys, uh, for those of you that are looking at this video, um, as you can see, John is very intelligent. John is a hardworking man. Um, but John is no different than you, no different than me. Uh, he's just, he has a different fire. He has a different way of, uh, of compartmentalizing things in his head. And he does things in a very systematic way. But anybody can do what John is doing. Anybody could do what Dr. Mike is doing or Jay Gillette. It's a matter of being consistent with what you do. Uh, this, um, a couple of uh, president calls uh, ago, uh, Steve McCaffrey said John Mesco uh, in the month of May 2022 made over $50,000 a month. And this is why I say he's the Roger Bannister of of Metro because you know what, that that blew away a lot of people's ceiling, right? A lot of people said, oh man, if I could make 20,000, I'd be great. John made 50, so right. what? And John is out to make a, a, a million dollars. That's $83,000 a month. Right. So, uh, I mean, do you want to touch on that for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know, you know, I know I'm off track a little bit. I'm a little bit off track and, and I know I got to get back on track. And continue to look at that because I'm looking at 10xing it too. Okay, so I know the past couple of weeks I I kind of veered off track a little. Not that I and it worked any less, but I wasn't focusing on what I really needed to do, and I I could see that as a result. So, um, but I, I know how to get right back on track. Boom and hit it. You know, so that's what my goal is. You know, I when you tell you said, well, John's a smart guy. This and that. I tell I, I, I do these PCR, I mean, these uh, meetings with 30, 40, 50 people. And I tell them all the time that I probably have half the IQ that you have. <laughs> you know, I said, uh, you know, that might, many of you have. I said, I, I don't have a high IQ or anything. As a matter of fact, I don't have a Harvard degree. A matter of fact, I quit college my second year. I don't even have an undergraduate degree. How do you like that? You know where I went to school? the University of Hard Knocks, like many of you. So maybe I'm like you. Maybe you have the sheepskin. Maybe you have the degree. That's great. Then apply it. I said, look, I'm over the hill. I may not look it, but I am. Okay. I started when I was 55. I'm 65 today. Okay. I just turned 65 a couple months Congratulations, ago. Congratulations, man. Thanks. I'm over the hill. I know it. Okay. So does that matter? It doesn't matter to me. I could care less. So if you're over the hill, don't worry about it. They'll pay you thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month here. Okay. And you can learn to do it fairly quickly. Okay. Um, I didn't know how to write an email 12 years ago, I swear. And now Mike knows I have nonprofit organization. I do digital marketing all over the US. I do all that kind of stuff. Now, I don't do a lot of it. I pay some people to do it. Right. I, and I look, here's what you need to do. You don't have to be smart. I know Mike called me smart. You don't have to be smart. Okay. You need to recruit people that are smart. Last night, I spent the evening with Rita and Paul Talmazan. Rita's an MBA and all that. Paul's an MBA and a PhD in business uh, systems, Paul Talmazan. He was part of your team. Oh, they're my team. I recruited him 10 years, nine years ago. His first year made $100,000. See, he, he just went right there. Okay. And he never made less than 100 in these past 10 years, but he's working a lot less now. He's 66, I think, or seven, but they're playing pickleball. They go on five vacations a year. They do this. They play table tennis. They go to the pool. They, they're, relaxed, they're enjoying retirement, but they're still making six figures, okay? It's because he set it up. So you don't have to be smart. You don't have to be an IT engineer or genius. You don't have to have their, your sheepskin and college degrees. Not that I say there's anything wrong with that. I think it's great. Education is great, but I don't have any of that. So that goes to show you, you, anybody can do it. If I can do it, any of you can do it. Yeah. So. Very good, man. Very good. I appreciate that, uh, that information. Uh, you know, we touched on, or you touched on several times there about six figures uh, and six figures, I think is, is a ceiling that a lot of people are looking to reach. Right. Um, uh, are there any skills or any particular actions? Actually, I want to ask you, what three skills or three particular actions would you tell somebody to focus on in order to, to, to reach a six-figure income with Metro? Yeah. Well, you need to work. Now, people say to me, they've always said this to me, man, you work a lot. What do you, how, 
uh, I had um, my wife's cousins over last week and they, and they saw me. I came downstairs. I wrote some emails and I left them for two hours. I came back. He said, John, how many days a week do you work? I said, I work every day. You know, I get up in the morning and I, I hit it. So look, I say, but this isn't work. Here's what work is. You ready? When you're 55 and you're at the deep end of the swimming pool, it's 830 at night. It's in November and it's raining. And I got umbrellas over my head because it's 42 degrees and I'm gluing pipe in the main drain because I got 200 yards of concrete coming the next day at 830 at night. And I started at 6 a.m. That's hard work. This is not hard work. This is fun. I work when I want it if I want. OK, so, you know, that's uh, that's what I. So is it hard work? Yeah, what do we do? I flap my lips. You know, I don't know. I mean, I write emails. Is that hard work? I, I got to get exercise. I got to cut my lawn just to get out there and go ride my bike just to get some exercise and do something with uh, some uh, some strenuous activity. Uh, you know, so I don't call this hard work. I, I call this fun. I call it fun. I, I beat up on insurance companies. I win. I tell people, if you want to win, come work with me. I win every day of my life. I win. So you want to win? Come work with us. That's a beautiful thing, man. That's a beautiful thing. Well, John, I, I appreciate you taking your time. And, uh, you know, uh, prior to us uh, uh, opening this call, uh, John said, hey, Mike, why are you why are you even bothering to do these interviews? And the reason why I'm bothering to do them is hopefully we can inspire somebody. Uh, you know, I, I was telling John, hey, John, maybe Maybe after this is done, maybe you and uh, Paul Peck could do an interview and, and show the world what that's about, right? Sure. And Paul Peck could get one of his downline and do the same thing. And and the idea is, you know, I'm all invested in this uh, 10X deal. And I know John is too. John is pushing hard, harder than I've ever seen him push. Right. Um, and if we get enough people pushing this to this level, guys, we're going to make some really dramatic changes. And what's great about this is that the more Metro becomes an awareness for everybody out in the marketplace, the more we all benefit. Right. right. So like they say, all ships rise on a rising tide. We all we all uh, rise. Yeah. So, Mike, let me mention something else that I think might inspire some people here. Go ahead. So. Um, and I've mentioned this at a couple of larger meetings that uh, I got involved with this uh, one orphanage in Uganda. And um, now it wasn't my money that did it, but I, I know how to raise money and I know how to ask people. So I got some donors and they built a building that houses 90 kids, orphans, beautiful wow. building. Now, here it would have cost a half a million. It cost $18,000 to build there. Then another $9,000 for some other amenities. We just got another donor to pay $9,000 for a wall around it. They need a security wall because somebody broke into the building that they were in and stole the orphans' bedding and clothes. You believe that? I mean, how low is that? So uh, they, this guy was inspired to give $9,000 to build a wall around the, the building. So I'm involved with that. I'm planning to go to... Uganda within a year. I plan to go to Africa. I've never been to Africa. I want to go to Nigeria. I know people in Nigeria and Uganda. I'd like to go. It's a beautiful country and it's pretty safe. Uganda's safe. Again, so I, thought, I, thought, I, I thought that might inspire some of you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, a metro opens a lot of doors for you. Metro yeah. opens a lot of doors. And uh, John, again, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all you've done for me. Every time I ask for something, you're you're always there. I truly, truly appreciate that. You know, I I look at you as a mentor, even though you and I don't have a, you know, a, 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 a regular, ordinary mentor uh, thing. But I observe you and, right. and, and I look at what you're doing and, and the motivation and the energy you put into things. And I try to duplicate them myself. So, I mean, you're hard to duplicate because you run circles around everybody. But, uh, you know, I, I get a lot of good from from just knowing you and seeing you work, man. So I appreciate that. Thank you for taking your time, buddy. I appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.